Today we're upgrading Windows 7 Home Premium 32-bit to Windows 10 Home 64-bit for free. This is the 50% shorter version of how to upgrade Windows 7 32-bit to Windows 10 64-bit 2020 as a free upgrade video. If you're not very tech savvy and you find this video overwhelming, click the link above and in the description below to watch the full step-by-step -step longer version of 27 minutes video with all the explanation you need. You're welcome. Step one, let's find out what Windows version we've got. So go to the start menu button, left click, and then go to computer, right click, and then select properties. So we've got Windows 7 Home Premium on this machine, which means you can upgrade to Windows 10 Home, but not to Pro, at least not for free. And then if you scroll down, you see that we've got system type is a 32-bit system, which we're gonna come back to later. You can see whether your Windows is activated or not, and you have a product ID. Now the product ID is not the same as the 25 character license key. But if you haven't got these, then we need to use some third party software. Now before you do this, step two, you need to check your hardware requirements, whether it's sufficient for a Windows 10 OS. I would personally recommend you have at least a dual core of minimum two gigahertz of speed for processor and a minimum, absolute minimum of four gigabyte of RAM, although more RAM would be better. You can find some information about your hardware here in the properties window. We can see that there is a core i3 and that's a dual core with four threads, I believe, at 2.4 gigahertz. We've got currently a four gigabyte of RAM DDR3 and 3.42 gigabyte is usable. Now, technically this can be upgraded and the reason there is a bit missing here, that's because of the onboard graphics, I believe, but also, because we're using a 32-bit system, it is not going to be able to utilize more than 4 gigabyte anyway. So you should really consider an upgrade at this stage if you can add some more RAM. The one upgrade I would absolutely recommend is to get an SSD, a minimum of 120 gigabyte. You can put your OS on there. Now, this is not correct that this uh, CPU is on a 32-bit operating system CPU. And for this, you can go to Intel's website and type in the Intel Core i3 4000M, I believe, and we can check its specifications there. And if you scroll down, all the way down, you can see the instruction set is a 64-bit, which means I can actually upgrade this to Windows 10 64-bit. First, let's just upgrade this 32-bit Windows 7 to a Windows 10 32-bit. Step three, we need to find the actual license key for Windows. I've used something like uh, Magic Jelly Bean, I think it was called. Uh, we can download this here and uh, we can install it. It's called Key Finder Installer. Go next. It gives you your Windows 7 license key, which is this 25 character. Save that as a copy somewhere, even write it down if you have to. Step four is to tidy, organize, and clean up your computer. And you need to do this both for your applications and also for your personal files. One possible way would be to click on your Start menu button, go to Control Panel, scroll down to Programs, and click on Uninstall a Program. And from there on, just scroll through the list of all the software and applications you've downloaded and installed. Right click on them and just, you know, uninstall. And the other thing you need to do is to go through your personal folders and make sure you are cleaning everything that is not required. You can also do a third party software search like CCleaner, which I would recommend is my preferred one. So download that, just click on install. Just run the cleaner. Let's start with the easy clean. Just click on start. It's going to do some analyzing of your PC and then clean all. And once this is done, you can also do a custom clean. You can also do a registry cleaner. Step five, you should really back up all your personal data, back up on your external hard drive and back up online if you can, at least two places. In the very least, if you've not done this before, this is where you go to step six, which is to create a partition and put some of these folders on that partition so you keep them away from your operating system. So let's do step six, which is create a partition and we're gonna go to the start menu button. We're gonna right click on computer and we're gonna go to manage. You're gonna go find your disk management. And what we're gonna do here is provided you've got space on there, and then we're gonna shrink this first. Right click on this and go to shrink volume. 
Okay, so it's calculated how much I can actually shrink, which is here. Uh, how much to shrink in megabytes is going to be over 106,000. So I'm just going to choose about 50,000, which is 50 gigs. So 50, 1, 2, 3. So click on shrink. Okay, so Windows has created a partition of about 50 gigabyte. It's currently unallocated. So we're going to format this. So select it, right click, and then click on new simple volume and click on next and leave it as 50,000 which is fine, click on next and maybe I'm going to just choose S for example for storage and then I'm going to call this uh, storage and leave everything else default, click on next, click on finish okay now I've got a partition here, I'm going to now transfer some personal files uh, over to this one so when we do the Windows upgrade then it's only going to affect the C drive and like you can see on my computer I now have my C drive and my S drive which is completely empty so I'm going to make a copy of everything just as a precaution Control A to select everything Control C to copy and I'm going to go over to storage and I'm going to put everything in here now I'm copying rather than moving because in theory, hopefully, even if I do upgrade directly, it should still keep my files in theory. But just in case, that's why I've got a different partition. But do remember, you should also back this up in a completely separate drive, which is online or an external hard drive. Now, step seven is to go to Microsoft's website and download the media creation tool. Now, let's just open this up and it's going to start the application. Accept the license terms. It's now creating Windows 10 Media. We're going to choose upgrade this PC now. Now, accept the license. If you want, you can click on this to change what to keep, but I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to click on install. After a few restarts, you're going to get this screen. I'm going to literally choose everything opposite to the default windows because of obviously data privacy concern. We'll try to reduce this. Now, at first glance, it looks like it has work and uh, the applications that were there before looks like they're still here. Let's go ahead and click on the start menu button. Obviously, this is now different. We want to go to settings and check the properties and we've got system. It is quite different. We can go to about. We've got the Intel Core i3 and 4 gigabyte of RAM and device ID, product ID is going to be a bit different. And at system type, it says 32 bit operating system on a 64 base processor, which means we could potentially now install a 64 bit Windows on this computer. This will not be be a direct in-house upgrade unfortunately is going to be a complete wipe and reload you're going to need to use the media creation tool to download a 64-bit version and use an installation drive to install a fresh copy the only thing is you will not need to get a new license key it says Windows is activated with a digital license so now that you've confirmed your Windows 10 32-bit is digitally activated with a license you need this new license key because it's going to be different to your Windows 7 license key so open one of the third-party software and once you find it make sure you save a copy somewhere because you might need it later especially if you want to upgrade to a 64-bit system if you now go to the folders on this local account you should be able to see there you go all the files are still there we actually have a partition remember we created the s partition and if i click on this and as you can see i've kept my partition and all my folders and files are still here but if you still want to put a 64-bit version on this pc now you can do this because your windows 10 home 32-bit is now digitally activated with a license for that you're gonna have to do it one of two ways the first one is to completely reinstall windows 10 64-bit on this computer everything will be wiped off but we did this uh, method for for a reason is because we want to keep some partitions so let me show you the new partition system on this windows now is going to be not just two but four partitions and as you can see we've got a healthy recovery partition and also a system reserved so what we can do with this method is to only install windows 10 64 bit on the c drive this partition in that way we're also keeping our storage drive with all our previous data you can have to start your windows media creation tool again you're gonna have to download an ISO for a 64-bit version and then create installation media go ahead and accept the license now this time you're gonna need to select create installation media USB flash drive DVD or ISO file for another PC click on next and untick this use the recommended options for this PC and you want to select your language which is going to be English UK 
edition you just one edition now is windows 10 and architecture if you're not too sure select both but you're going to need to have a more than eight gigabyte uh, usb drive uh, so i would recommend 16 gigabyte and click on next and here i'm not going to choose usb flash drive because i want to download the iso file and click on next and uh, you want to name it something and save it on uh, your desktop somewhere which i've already done as you can see it's windows 10 home 64 here which i have to put on my desktop and uh, we're going to use rufus to create the installation media go ahead and get your rufus and put in a blank uh, i would say 16 gigabyte uh, flash drive if you've got one okay and once you've done that it's going to locate it and what you want to do is locate your iso here by going click on select and then you go to find the iso image and selecting that now it's important for you to be able to also come to the partition scheme now my current um, pc here the laptop has got an mbr uh, partition system not gpt gpt is the more modern one the previous one was mbr so you need to select the correct one for you i'm guessing most people if you're coming from a windows 7 32 bit you might have mbr instead of gpt so make sure you select mbr otherwise it will not boot properly now obviously if it doesn't boot with mbr you're gonna have to redo this with a gpt partition and you can name it something if you want um esd iso i'm gonna call it um windows 10 um home although it's just one edition now and we we'll 64 bit click on start and it's going to erase everything on the usb drive click on ok when your installation drive is ready click on close and what you need to do is to eject it and then you're going to boot into the pc again by selecting the correct boot order and you're going to start a new installation for windows 10. Now shortly after you click on install now on your new USB installation drive, you're going to get this activate windows asking you for your product license key. You need to skip that. Just click on I don't have a product key and uh, hopefully you should be fine. And here is where you can choose your architecture and your version. So we've got home 64 bit and uh, just click on next. And this is where you can select the partition to install windows on by leaving the other partitions as is remember we had four partitions the last one was our storage and we had two reserve so the one we're looking for is partition two which is the primary as usually the biggest one that's where c drive is located so select that and click on next and it's going to tell you if it's got a previous windows installation they're going to be moved to a different folder click on ok and that's it in this way you are keeping your storage partition and only reinstalling windows 64 on this partition only and i'll see you back on the screen as usual after windows legendary annoying setup process we're back onto the login screen so let's click on the start menu button and go to settings or system we could just check it from there and you can see it's the same Intel Core i3 with 4 gigabyte. This time we're actually using 4 rather than 3 point whatever it was. And we've got the same device ID. And on system type, it says 64 bit operating system and x64 base processor. So that, that is good. Still Windows 10 Home. And let's check the activation. And you can see here it says Windows 10 Home. Windows is activated with a digital license linked to your Microsoft account. Fantastic. And if you want to double check, you can go to your disk management here and find out about the partitions. And we should be pretty okay. We have the same four partition and our storage is still there, but it looks like they've changed the um, pathway. Uh, it's now E instead of S. Not a problem. We can change that back. But the C drive was what we uh, put the new Windows 10 64 bit on, and everything else should have remained the same. You can go double check in your file explorer. Hopefully, it will have. Uh, there it is. Uh, open that and uh, storage. We've got all our documents and our folders as from before. So before you go, make sure you check out some of the videos we've done on the topic of Windows 7 and of support link up there or on the side. And also check out this awesome troubleshoot series or this other awesome one PC tool them all series at the bottom there. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to go from me to techie and use my Amazon affiliate links. This was Ash from Hillmine Tech and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>